I'm Perry from Reach It Poles, and one of the most important things about your safety and your efficiency is actually whether you have a rigid pole. So what we've got here is the true scientific test, which is what's called a three-point flex test. And you know, we have two points at each end um, with the poles fully extended. And at each pole is going to be fully extended or the same extension. And then we put a weight in the center. And then that weight will displace the pole. And that gives you an indication as to how flexible the pole is. And then I'm going to explain a whole lot of reasons as to why it's so important. And then we're going to give you a flexless guarantee yeah, on reach at poles. That's where we're heading to. OK, so have a look at this. The first thing that we need is some weights. So I've prepared these weights. We'll put them on the scale, hands off. And this is in metric, so it's 5.8 kilos, which if you do a conversion is 12.8 pounds. So let's say 13 pounds. Now, you can find whatever weight you've got at home. You can find your own two points at the same height, and you can do this test yourself. But I want to show you what this is a basic pole. That's, uh, in the industry, they call it a, a basic pole. And I want to show you what happens. You put 13 pounds on a basic pole. And I've got a little marking on the floor here as the center. And this pole. It's touching the ground. Look at that. Like it wants to go even further, and it's starting off 56 inches, so nearly five feet off the ground. Yeah. So this is a basic pole. So you just can't imagine. This, this is the pole that frustrates me more than anything in the whole wide world, that people get sold this. They get sold a really expensive pure water system, and this piece of shit pole here, which is only meant to be used by homeowners who are going to clean their windows four times a year, and we don't really care about their safety, efficiency sort of aspects. But when a professional window cleaner gets in and has to use this, it's just devastating. And that means nobody cares about that person. Now let's have a look at an alternative. So we'll take that pole there, and then I'm going to go and take this pole is the top five sections of the mother of all poles, or previously known as, uh, no, yeah, previously known as precision, right? So have a look at this. This is, this is the pole, this is the composition, the carbon fiber that we take to go to 80 feet. Yep, and have a look at this. This is what we use to get to 80 feet. Ta-da! <laughs> See? Now, what we're going to do is take some records, and you can start to understand. We're going to go through the reach at poles, and you're going to understand immediately what you're paying for. And then you'll be able to run this test. If you do have a water-fed pole, you can run this test yourself on your own pole and start publishing it into social media, like Facebook and Instagram, and do your own test. And then you, know, you can ask me any time, say, look, put this weight on this pole and show me, and then I'll sign the pole and say, that's the pole you're getting. You'll be able to see the test. And then when you get it, you can test it yourself and make sure nobody fiddled anything. Oh, I need to put the tape on your side, right? So there goes the straight line. And you're looking at the bottom of the pole. And you can see that's like 49.5, 50, something like that, around 50 inches. Now, how do you work out what actually happened with this pole? You come over here, and you say, both of these, this is the, the starting point, right? So we're interested in the starting point. And you can have a look here and see the underside of here, the underside of the pole. It starts at 58 inches. Is that what it says? Oops, hang on. I've got to get it straight. 50, I thought it was 56. What does that say, Harry? 57. Yeah, 57 right there. 57 inches. You see that? So the starting point is 57. And the ending point, when it's in the center, is 50. Yep, exactly the same. So let's draw that off on the whiteboard so we all get an idea of what's going on. We've got a, a stand and a stand. And this here, this is the ground here. And this here, that height there is 50 inches. No, 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 57. 57 inches. And then we're going to put the pole 
in here, like that, and at this point here in the middle, it's 50 inches. M O A P. Mother of all poles. Yeah, have a look at that. And what we know, if we took that blue pole, we know that it flexed like that to zero, like it was still it was sitting on the ground. It would have gone all the way down, right? So this is 50 inches and zero inches, and you can kind of get the difference. Now, I want to adjust the set a little bit. Let me take this off and just say, okay, that's where we compared those two. Yep, so I'll put that back on the scales, take this off, and I want to, because we're going to be testing the Reach It Mini, the ABB Plus pole, and the tactical pole, the new pole for 2018, we're going to extend the length of these. So it matches, because the only way to do a three-point flex test is to have the pole, all the sections fully extended, because that's the pole you're going to be using. You don't want anybody taking out the number one section and you're just using two, three, four, and five. And you don't want anybody just increasing the overlap on a pole so that they can get a better result out of the flex because the more overlap you've got, you know, the better you get the overlap, the less flex you've got. So these poles are all fully extended and then I can have a look at this. Let's go straight to Reach It Mini. Oh, no, I'll start with the MOAP again and because now the MOP, the mother of all poles, is over a longer distance, so one would assume over a longer distance it'll flex a little bit lower. Yep. So here we go in the center, put the 13 pounds of weight, and there we go. I might have to, it might want to wander a little bit, so I might have to hold it, but I'm not going to hold it up. All right, so just put my finger there. I'll bring the tape measure in. And this is over about 20-something um, feet is the actual gap, right? Now come in here, Harry, and have a measure of that. What does that say? The bottom of the pole. Is 44.6 Okay, so 44 and a half, yeah? Okay, so that's the mother of all poles. Now, we'll take that off. And we'll go to, let's go to Reach It Mini, which has been our flagship pole for the last five years. Yep. Now, Mini's made from a lower modulus. Modulus is, a, is the relationship of weight to rigidity. So it's made from a lower modulus carbon fiber because it's a, it's a pole that's designed for two-story work to be crazy rigid. But it's also over-designed in a way because it can be extended with plus A, plus B, and plus C up to 55 feet reach. So when you buy a two-story reach at Mini, you know, you've bought the ability to reach five stories, so we have to manufacture it so that it can reach five stories. But it's not as rigid as a reach at Pro or a Warrior, which is coming out, and it's not as, reach it, as rigid as a Procision, because the Procision and the mo mother of all poles they have to go to 80 feet, so we have to make it out of a higher modulus of carbon fiber. So let's see what happens with a mini. Mini middle there, and there. Boom! Okay, so that's re reach at mini. Now this is 13 pounds of weight, so don't worry, this is still a, this is a fantastic pole. We sold hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of these. And it's a fantastic, incredibly rigid. This is actually a lot of weight on this pole, but it's the best way to determine. Now you can have a look at that, and Bring we're looking at what, 36 and a half? Oh, 35 and a half, yeah. Within plus or minus the half. Okay, so that's 35 and a half. So let's put mini in here. Right? Oh, probably. That's a bit unfair, but anyway, it gives me time, place to write, yeah? Oops, 30. 5.5. Now, you know how I said that the Mini can be extended to three stories, four stories, and five stories using Mini plus A, Mini plus B. So our preference is that you use Mini ABB, 
for five stories. And then what's great is the way we make the extensions is that you can actually join the extensions together and make another pole exactly the same length as a mini. So you can end up with two 25-foot poles or one 50-foot pole. So what I've got here is I've put together, I just unboxed some mini ABB here. And in the middle here, you can see what we call, this here is what we call connect AB. So it means that you can join your extensions together because otherwise the only time you use your extensions is on the really high glass and then you have to put them back into your vehicle and the only time you're gonna pull them out again is when you have really high glass. So as reach it, what we did is we made a higher modulus um, extension so they add core rigidity exactly where you need them in the pole where the pole goes to flex. So you add plus A first and then plus B and then another plus B into the mini and you've got a 50 foot pole or 55 foot reach. So these are made of a higher modulus carbon fiber than the mini. So when we put the weight on here, the same weight, right, you can see, it's gonna wander a wee bit, but that's okay. And we can put the tape measure on this. Bring that camera in, Harry. Gonna touch that on the ground right there. So you can see there, what's that? 39, I reckon. Just under, th just under 39. Yeah, so let's say 39, it's close enough. Whoops. Okay, so we can write that down and we'll put that in red. So you can see the plus A, B, B is 30. 39.0 ABB. So you can see that the plus ABB is made of a higher modulus carbon fiber because it is more rigid. And these don't seem like very much differences when you put 13 pounds on it, but if you're cleaning windows, you're not gonna be applying 13 pounds of pressure, right? So we're giving you an excessive amount of pressure so you can actually understand you know, the effect and the difference between the poles. If we only used five pounds, and then they wouldn't flex enough for you to notice the difference, yeah? So, that is ABB. I'm really excited about this. And then we're gonna bring out Tactical. Tactical is the new pole for 2018. We've got it being made right now. We had to make new molds and new everything, but we've made it so it's still compatible with all the clamps that, the Rhino clamps that we've got. So here it is. This is a tactical, it hasn't, got the, it hasn't got the pretty end on it, right? This, the pretty end is just a cover, but it's the same material. And have a look at this, right? Here's my center mark, and you have a look at tactical. So that's tactical, there. Now, this is so cool. So when the tactical comes out, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive than a mini. Oops, stop that from wondering. And wait, 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 until that's just touching the ground. Okay, right there. 40.5, like just under 40.5. Exactly, 40.5. And we could put, we can put another blue line in here, right? So that is in there. 40.5 tactical. Okay, so tactical has got high modulus carbon fiber. The mother of all poles has got ultra high modulus carbon fiber. And the warrior, which is gonna be the middle pole, which we haven't got yet because it's not out of the molds, but the warrior is gonna be a mix of ultra high modulus and high modulus. Whereas the tactical is a mix of high modulus and normal carbon fiber like the mini carbon fiber. So here's the question. What does all that mean to you? So let me just make some notes here so that I can talk about them later. Firstly, you can see the basic is a disaster, right? It's a complete disaster. What we're looking for what we're looking for from a water-fed pole is um, absolute rigidity. Now, when you're dealing with two and three stories, 
then you're going to be using your arms, right? So you're wanting to transfer the effort from your muscles in your arms to the brush. Now, if you've got a pole that's flexing, then you're going to be losing your effort in flex. Yep. So what you want is a completely rigid pole. Second, because the future is in, in swivels, like side to side. So, so you're going to be using rotational torque and twisting the pole and changing the angle of the brush at the top, like you'll be doing this with the brush. And again, that's going to be, this is going to be your axle. The pole is your axle between your wrist, which is going like this, right? So you have a look at that. That action there, when I do this and twist the pole like that, this is through the carpal tunnel, right? So that is a, that is a vulnerable part of the body for a water-fed window cleaner. And at the top, the, the brush is going to spin. Now, if you're doing that and your pole is flexing, so you try and put a constructor brush on top of a basic pole, the pole's going to be like this. And as you turn, the pole's going to corkscrew. It's going to load up your wrist, right? So the, the, the basic pole is not even potentially injurious. It is injurious, right? It's not a rigid pole. It's, it's dangerous and it shouldn't be sold to window cleaners, to professionals, right? The guy's going to be out there for four to six hours a day, maybe longer, and somebody's going to tell him that he has to, you know, overload his wrist and all of his control muscles, and he's fighting flicks if he's using pencil jets, all sorts of things. It's just wrong, wrong, wrong. It just means, give me your money. How much money have you got? Okay, do this, and they'll make the money out of the pure water system and not give you the efficiency that you need. Okay, so... Then we want to talk about... We're talking about safety and the safety on the grass. Safety, what does it yes. Mean for the what does this mean for safety? If you've got a pole that's crazy rigid, the mother of all poles is like that because we make it from a higher modulus, the highest modulus carbon fiber. It's basically military-grade carbon fiber without certificates. And it hardly flexes at all, even with 13 pounds of weight on it. So that, the reason we use that one for the mother of all poles is because it's a 40-foot pole that can be extended using... Pro plus A, Pro plus B, to 80 feet reach. Yeah? So it's a really rigid 40 foot pole, more rigid than what you need for 40 feet, but we make it so that you can reach 80 feet with it. And again, what we're trying to do is reduce the amount of flex. Now when you're doing over three stories, you, start, you stop using your arms so much so you're not trying to push the brush up and down. You start moving on the ground like this. Yeah? So you're, you're moving here. Now, so what's happening, if you have a look at this, you've got a window up here, you're a little guy down here, and you're moving backwards and forwards there, and you're, you've got your pole going up, you know, seven, eight, six, seven, eight stories, and you're asking your brush to go up and down like that. So can you see, I'm gonna move in the x-axis, and I'm gonna ask my brush to move in the y-axis, how important it is that that pole is rigid, otherwise you're going to lose your effort in flex, right? So we don't want that. We want the pole as rigid as possible the higher you go. Okay, so that should cover safety, yeah? Well, this is maximum it's safety. It's almost catastrophic. Certainly, no, 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 it's, it's, it's potential. <sighs> we'll just talk a little bit of history. The water-fed pole replaced the ladder and made the ladder, uh, uh, the awareness of the ladder, um, the ladder from working from heights, the, the risks of working from heights, um, it highlighted it because you can't fall off a water-fed pole, right? So the injury, the risk, the, 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 the end, the maximum consequence of falling off a ladder is death. And the maximum consequence from a water-fed pole is not death. I mean, you could actually kill somebody by dropping the pole, but you can't kill yourself by dropping the pole. So the water-fed pole kind of is super safe like that. Now, let me give you another scenario. Let's say you fall off your ladder and you don't die, right? So you've got broken bones, injuries, things out of place, bruises, whatever. Six weeks later, you're back on your ladder and you're cleaning windows, right? So ladders are dangerous and you can recover from some of the accidents that happen with ladders. Now, water-fed poles are potentially injurious through a different kind of injury. It's called a repetitive motion injury. And we use a lot of control muscles and we're fighting the pole and we're working the pole off center, right? So you look at this, like people walk like this, they ski like this, right? But everything is done, they fight like this, everything's done on center. And then when we use a water-fed pole, 
we come off center. So we twist our body and then we're putting our action in like this. So all tools, you've got a, a, a basically an action, which is an up, down, or a side to side, or whatever, and then you're gonna repeat that as a cycle, you're gonna repeat that over and over again. That's how we do work. So the, the average person maybe is gonna do somewhere between two and a half and five million cycles in a year as a window cleaner. And then, so when we're off center, all these actions are basically creating what are called injury grooves. And those injury grooves. Before you go into the water bed side, yep. that every tool as a professional is a repetitive motion injury. Yes, it's every every tool has got repetitive motion injury, even your squeegee and your mop. Why? Because you're creating the same action you're and you're using micro you're muscles. A professional that has a lot of repetition. Right, so yeah, I get your point. So the point that Harrison's wanting me to clarify is that because you're a professional cleaner, you're gonna do these same actions over and over and over and over and over again, year, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out, decade in, decade out, possibly. So that's why they're potentially injurious. Now, the more injurious pole is one with, with the more flex because you're gonna be running risks on carpal tunnel, what's called deca veins is there, tennis elbow, rotator cuff, trapezoid, um, looking up, you know, there are all sorts of injuries which are potentially there for, 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 for water fed. And my point that I really wanna sort of drive myself towards is if you get carpal tunnel, that's worse than falling off a ladder and breaking your leg because you fall off a ladder and break your leg, you can go back to work. When you get carpal tunnel, it's the end of your career. If you get a rotator cuff injury, that can be the end of your career. You get a lower back, like a knotting injury that I had, that took me off poles. I couldn't work anymore. So, so I'm, my concern is that, you know, the, the floppy pole should not be sold for professional use because of the number of repetitions this guy's gonna do. And you need to get rid of the floppy poles for sure. So from a safety point of view, what we're looking at is this scale of, of, of how floppy is your pole. This scale is so critical and you can test it yourself. You just need to find, like, let's have a look at this, Harry. Like, have a look at these boxes here. You know, your pole fully extended and put it on a box like that. Let me just do that. And then, you know, move the box back so that you've got an overlap like that and you've got your weight in the middle you've got a foot or so on either end you know and you've got the weight in the middle and then you can measure you know the height of the box yourself yep so i know this one is 35 and a half inches yep so that's 35 and a half and you come to the middle measure it all out and then you go okay that's 21 roundabout you know so we know there's a 15, a 14 and a half inch flex, yeah? And then you go, boom, 14 and a half inch flex. Sorry, <laughs> you nearly went over that pole. And you can do this, and you can say, this is how floppy my pole is. You can use five pounds, you can use 10 pounds, you can use 20 pounds, it's still gonna give you a, a number. And then you feed that number back into social media and start talking about how flexible is this pole versus that pole. Right? And that's the conversation that needs to happen. Because it's not how floppy is my pole, it's how safe is my pole. That's the first topic. Yeah? All right. So, next topic. Next topic. How efficient is my pole? Okay, so how efficient is my pole? Efficiency. efficiency is about making money. So the definitions of efficiency are um, doing more work with less time and doing more work with less effort. Right, because it's the worker that you want to look after. If he burns out and he's tired by, you know, by the end of the day, you can't ask him to go and do another job. If he's not burned out at the end of the day, he can do another job. It also affects his quality of life. If he's burned out at the end of the day, he goes home and he's grumpy and he doesn't really want to spend the time with the family, so then he has all sorts of other issues which then come back into his workplace. So the rigidity of a pole from an efficiency point of view is all about what did I do with my body and how much of that ended up on the glass, right? So if I've got a rigid pole, when I move, the brush is moving. If I've got a floppy pole, when I move, the pole is moving, yeah? So it's critical for professional use that you have as rigid a pole as is practical. Now, the reason we don't make the mini out of the ultra-high modulus carbon fiber is A, it'll be too expensive, 
and B, it's unnecessary because the mini's you know, working at a, at a lower height, so it has less pressures and forces on it, right? And as a rule, the mini users are only cleaning at four and five stories, you know, maybe three to 5% of the total glass that they clean. So having a two-story pole that can reach those jobs is, is practical, whereas if you're a commercial window cleaner, then you, you're out there and cleaning four and five story buildings all the time, then it makes better sense to have a higher modulus pole because that's what you're gonna be using for a lot of your repetitions. What, you know, some people go, oh, mini's two or three hundred dollars more than a basic pole. Yes, and we could make a two story basic pole, but we don't because otherwise when you go to three stories, you have to go and buy a whole new pole. And you go to four stories, you have to buy another new pole. And you go to five stories and another new pole. And that's what the, the, the industry has wanted to prepare, 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 whatever that word is, push out, right, make happen. So when, when I thought about reach it, I'm thinking about how to give you the most efficient tool for 80% of the glass you reach and then allow you to extend it when you win that work, allow you to extend it into a, you know, reaching greater heights. And so that's why we make the plus ABB out of a higher modulus carbon fiber. It's made out of the same carbon fibers we make reach at Pro and Warrior, yeah? Because it's a higher modulus, because now you're starting to go up into those super heights. So from an efficiency point of view, you have maximum efficiency here, yeah? And disastrous efficiency here, because what happens We've got a video, you know, we've got a video on, on YouTube called Meet Bob. And we actually had this blue pole and we had Harrison at one end and um, Tony at the other end, remember? And we jump roped Bob with a water fed pole. So he's doing jumps and he did it up in the air and spin around and all that, like jump roping with a water fed pole. And that's what, you know, some people are being sold, some bosses are, thinking is the right thing to do because they want to save money on the tools. They think the window cleaner doesn't care about the tools, so why would he spend good money on tools? But the, 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 the biggest cost of water fed is not your tools, it's the worker. So we've got to give the worker more efficient tools. And the way to give a good worker more efficient tools is to give them a more efficient tool. More efficient means more rigid, and then just appropriately rigid, whether we go with the mini tactical series, or we go with a Pro Warrior series, or we go with a Precision, the mother of all poles series, you know, according to what's the maximum height that you may one day need to, to extend that pole to. All righty, what's the next topic? Oh, okay, so let's talk about value, yeah? What is the value of your pole? Well, your, the value of your pole is not what your boss paid for it or what you paid for it. The value of your pole is what's the hourly rate that you can generate from it. Now, the biggest contributor to the, uh, to the change in hourly rate is actually the brush. So constructor brush has changed the way people clean windows. But the second part and the second most influential part is the pole. A rigid pole means that you can control the constructor brush accurately with precision and get get the job done, get the brush over the glass in the fastest possible way. So when we look at the, the value of a pole, what I'm gonna suggest to you, and what's really exciting is that Reach It, we're, we're in the throes of developing a trade-in program. So this is why you wanna do this. You wanna go out and get a weight, two, a three-point test, two points at the same height, a weight in the middle, right? You can tell me this is the weight that I used and we can replicate your, your maths and then we can look at the flex on your pole and say, okay, well, we'll give you a value, a trade-in value on that pole like this. Let's say you have a pole that flexes all the way to the ground, like a basic pole, yeah? Then we'd say, okay, well, it's got a trade-in value of $100. Why? Because there's absolutely nothing we can do for it, right? It's, it's worthless to anybody, right? Nobody's gonna buy that second hand. Let's say we get a pole that looks like this, and we might say, well, okay, that's a $200 trade-in. And then you have a pole that looks like this, and we might say, okay, that's a $500 trade-in. Yep, so we start looking and saying, how much does your pole flex determines how valuable it is from a trade-in perspective, yep? So if you go out today and you grab a weight if you want to match our maths, we used 
basically 13 pounds, 12.8 pounds. And here's how you do your maths, right? We started with 56 inches, and then we subtract for the MOAP 44.5 over um, the flex is over 20, uh, let me just check, 22 feet, something like that. It's a 22 foot f um, between the, the points, yep. So there's 22 feet between there and there. So 18 inches over on each side. And so you go 56 minus 44.5 equals 11.5 inches flex. Yep, MOAP. Now, then we go to tactical. And again, the 56 inches was the height of the, the outer points on the three-point flex. And it went 40.5. So you go minus 40.5. So that's equals 15.5 inches flex. Now, you've got to have the pole fully extended. If you ask, for example, you could ask a reseller to make you a video of the pole that you're buying and say, can you do a three-point flex for me? And then sign that pole. But you've got to make sure it's fully extended because we've watched some of the tricks that they play, right? They might uh, just not fully extend it. Or they might take the number one section out and show you how rigid it is you know, it was just two, three, four, five, six, or something like that, okay? So you want to see it fully extended because that's the pole that you're going to be using, fully extended, and with your extensions if you need to. So then the ABB, you can say 56 inches, they all started the same, minus 39.0 equals 17 inches flex, yep, or displacement, and then mini is 56 inches minus 35.5 is 20.5 20, 20 inches flex. And then basic is 56 inches minus 56 inches and more equals, z uh, no, 56 minus, minus zero, sorry, and more equals 56 inches flex plus, right? So what's the value of that pole? We can start to, well, we're going to set up a scale for you and say if you have this much weight and it flexes this much, then we'll give you this much money as a trade-in on it and then you can trade up to a reach at mini, a reach at tactical, a reach at warrior, or the mother of all poles. So that's your, your full training. Um, when you watch this video, I'm sure there's going to be questions that you have, thoughts that you have, challenges that you have, things that you find hard to believe. Go into the notes area below, like into the thread, and ask me the questions. I'll answer them, right? Open the dialogue. Even if you've got a question that you kind of know the answer to, if you type that question, what I've found on, so on, on Facebook and YouTube is that there's hundreds of people thinking a question, but not everybody's going to type it. So the people that actually do interact provide a service you know, to everybody else. And we get to answer you directly, your question. And basically, because there's thousands of people that are watching the Reach It channel, then thousands of people get to read that conversation. So it doesn't really matter if you know, no detail is too small is kind of like the saying which makes it all work. You can ask any question about anything. You want to challenge anything. You want a dedicated video. That's, that's how we wanted you to use this video as you're watching it today. The next thing I want you to do is from me as a, as a, as a manufacturer, because you're in our factory right now, have a little pan around, right? So this is the Reach It factory. Then I really want you that if you're not sure, you can, you can ask us, because we flex test every single pole. That's what the reason we live in China. I know it sounds like we're on the other side of the world and we're in enemy territory, but we're here because I have a lot of experience. I've been coming to China as a buyer since 2000, and I have a lot of experience about being cheated. So and once that container arrives, I tell you, it doesn't matter who you are, you're going to sell that stuff. Now, when product comes in here, we reject it and we send it back to the factory to be reworked or rejected. Like, and we don't let it go to you. And we flex test every single pole after assembly. And every pole has like a small range. As you can see now, we don't use um, 13 pounds. We use 
uh, around 12 pounds, and then we just we flex test every pole, and if they flex too much, we reject them. So we can put a flexless guarantee, you know, for each pole style, yeah? And you, if you want us to sign or put a specific number or put your name on it and then ship it to you, and then you can run exactly the same test and we'll guarantee you that the pole you bought from ReachIt, the pole you thought you bought from ReachIt from our marketing, is the pole that you actually received. Like we're very much interested now in proving ReachIt with, with personal service even beyond what we've done before. Now we've got like nearly 30 people working for us. We can do a lot more like as far as proving things to you so that you can feel safe and confident when you choose reach it over all other brands. Okay, so that's uh, me signing out and uh, thank you for watching. It's probably a long video, but it's a really, really one of the most important buying decision. These polls are lasting six years plus already. We're a six year old company now. And so the life of a poll could be 10 years. You're gonna make a decision. It might be $100 more or $100 less. That's not how you make the decision. What you're looking for is the efficiency of your worker, the safety of your worker, and you're gonna make that money back multiples over by focusing on the worker compared to focusing on the price that you pay for the tool. Okay, so I'm Perry, signing out.